So in essence, if I could wave a magic wand and make this the only bill in the entire closing, the seller gets the $100,000 for the house that the buyer paid for it, plus he gets 114 more, he would walk out with $100,000. $114. The hundred is the purchase price. The 114 was the credit he got back and the buyer pays a hundred, but he also had to pay the 114 to the seller. So the cost of this house to the buyer is a hundred thousand, 114. Right? Now, let's have some more fun. Thirty days again. Close on the nineteenth. There's the seller. There's the buyer. However, now it's an accrued bill of two hundred and ten dollars. Tell me who gets what and how much. Who gets what and how much. What was the accrued bill again? The number? 210. 210. Okay. Thanks. So let me do my math here just so that I can make sure. All right, so what do we got here? I got $133 and it's uh, made out to the buyer. What's that translate to? I want you to use the word debit and credit. It would be a credit to the buyer of $133. Let's write this down so we can see where we're at. Cameron is saying the buyer gets a credit of $133. What happens to the seller, Cameron? The seller is debited $133. The seller gets debited $133, according to Cameron. Uh, yeah. Anybody else want to confirm or deny his existence? Don't look at him. Lashana? Yes, no, who cares? I think I got the same answer as him, honestly. Jamon got the same answer as Cameron. So far we got two to nothing. Anybody else care to weigh in? I hope you all got the same answer because it is in fact the correct answer. All right, here's how this works now. Because it's an accrued bill, it is paid when? There. Who pays the bill? The answer is the buyer will write the check because he now has the property owner when it comes due on the 30th. So the question is, how much will he write the check for? He will write the check for the full hundred, the full 210, because whoever's wanting paid doesn't really care who used it. All they know is somebody owes them 210 bucks. 
Um, but here's the problem. The seller used it these days right here, but never paid for it. So he literally has to pay for the amount he has used. And the amount he used is 19 days at $7 is 160 or $133. And Cameron is entirely correct. He will pay the buyer that amount of money. It is very much like if I told you hey, we're going to the movies and the tickets are $20. Give me your 10. I will add it to my 10 and I'll walk up there and pay the $20 for the two tickets. So you gave me your money so I could pay the bill. How do they do that with um, bills like your water bill or electric bill that aren't like a set rate? Well, typically utilities aren't prorated because utilities are cut off on a day. Okay. So utilities are not a good example of doing this calculation because the water bill will be turned off in Christina's name on the 19th and she will pay the bill and mine will be turned on. So okay. utilities are not really a good example and are not typically prorated but like homeowners associations that are paid at the end of the year might be like this. Um, uh, heating oil. That, that wouldn't be like one that, like like a utility bill that is like, you know, you never know like how much it's going to be. Well, like that's would, why they don't prorate them because you never okay. know how much it's going to be. They would turn certain things like heating oil if your house is petroleum or liquid heating oil, like out in the country, they know how much is in the tank and they literally can come and take a reading and you would call their uh, co-op and go, hey, we're selling the house on the 19th. They will literally come out and measure the heating oil and then say, okay, you use something and we got to prorate it okay. because they know how much is in there. Mm -hmm. But in a situation of like a water bill, because you're right, that's why utilities aren't prorated. Okay. All right. Taxes, homeowners associations, um, special assessment taxes, things where we know the bill, but it's not due to the end is typically things that are prorated. All right. So watch this. Here's some things that I want you to remember. I always remember this. A, B, C. Accrued buyer credit. Or here's the other way to look at this. In this accrued bill, who's actually writing the check? The buyer is actually writing the check. Who got the credit in an accrued bill? The buyer. In a prepaid bill, who actually wrote the check? The seller. Who got the credit in the proration? The seller. So the easy way to remember this is who is literally writing the check to pay the bill? They will get the credit in the proration. Whoever's writing the check gets the credit. Okay. So now, literally, I can ask you, what kind of bill is this? And you can see that if the buyer got a credit, what kind of bill? That's an accrued bill. If the seller got a credit, that's a prepaid bill. So you can work it forward and backward. You know who gets the credit based on the type of bill, but you also know the type of bill based on who got the credit. Hint, hint. All right. And that is how proration works. Are we cool? 
All right. So that is pretty much the information. <clears throat> but what I want to do now is I want to actually go through a example question. I sent you guys all the homework. If you're online listening, it is a document that I have attached to this chapter as a PDF. All right. So either pull the homework out, get it out on your phone, something. Because I'm going to go through this example with you because on the test and the state, there is at least one of these questions. This is a question that is kind of intense and I'm telling you now, it's not mathematically hard at all. But where you will mess up is that you are not paying attention and talking to your husband, cooking meal for your kids, and you put a number in the wrong place, it will make that column total wrong. And then when you subtract that column from this column, it'll make your total wrong. So literally missing one number can cost you two or three answers. So what I'm telling you is, which you should be doing anyway, do your exam without interruption from other people. And I get it that there are other people in your residence that you may have to be responsible for, mainly the little munchkins under 18. I've got a bunch of them myself, or I did, they're now old. So, but just concentrate. Let me show you how I would do this. And it becomes really useful on how it works. 